Salam alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, always with Yunus Shafiri. In this video, we are going to see 9 Android interview questions and how you can answer them properly. Let's get started. So the first question, what is the Android manifest? We always see this file here, like how you can reply to this question. So basically you should describe its role. Basically this is a file that must be present in all Android apps. This file will be first checked by the, for example, Google Play Store, and also it will be checked directly from the Android system. The Android system won't check any class before it checks this Android manifest XML. Whether you check it XML or another form, that depends on the implementation, but it will check this file. So basically this file show all the components of your app. If a component isn't presented here, it won't be allowed to run. If you don't declare an activity here, if you want to start that activity, it won't be shown because the system doesn't know. So the system needs to understand all the components you have in your app and you do that through the Android manifest. So as I said, it's an interface to the system, to the system understand what your application is about. And also we use it with the permissions. Any permissions you need to run the app must be declared here. If it isn't here, you can't use it in the app. So basically it shows all the permission needed by the app so the system will know. It shows also the hardware or software features needed by the app. For example, this app requires camera. So the system will understand if it doesn't have camera, it won't be able to run this application. Or even more, in the Play Store, it won't even get installed in your application from the Play Store because the system will understand whether you have camera or not. Basically there are many hardwares here, of course, like it's just, it's not just about the camera. You can have GPS, network, like many, many things. So to properly reply about this question, make your answers around, it is an interface for the system to know about your app. That's it. So the second is, what is basically the difference between a val and a const val, for example? So the main similarity is that whenever you assign one of those, you can't change it later. Whenever you assign a value, it won't be changed later on. Same thing for the const file, because you must pre present a const file. But what is the difference why we need that and that? Basically, it's for the time that initialization will happen. So if I declare here, let me declare it here at the top level, and do a const file here like that. You can't do const file, it's impossible. It must go with this one. So if I declare A and declare it like that, if I declare B, for example, and it goes like that, I do value like following. Both can be changed, right? I can't change A here to another value like that. Same thing for the B. Both aren't changed and this will present as a compilation error. So what is the main difference? The difference is when this initialization will happen. This will happen at the compile time. So when the compilation happen, when the app will be compiled, this value will be assigned immediately at the compile time. Whereas this one will be initialized when this activity will run for the first time. So this is the main difference. So it depends on the time this initialization happens. This is the main difference between cost file and file. Now for the third question, what is a context in the Android world? So what is a context? Like we use this mystery object for doing many things, getting system service, launching an activity, doing many things. So if you want to start an activity, you have to provide it with an intent, and this intent, it will tell you that I need a context. And you refer to this and another activity, for example, main activity dot class is just sick, for example. So this is the context. What is the context? Basically, the context, I don't know about the name, if it is appropriate or not, but this is the name they use for that thing. But this is kind of a system handle. Like, you will get access to many things for the system, for the environment, based on that context. If you don't have that context, you can't reach to many things about the system. So it's a way to access many things that the system provides. It acts as an interface to global information about the application environment. For example, if you want to get something, for example, a string, well, you can do this get string, for example, because you happen to run in context thing, because this activity will come from fragments, sorry, fragment activity. This fragment activity will come from component activity, component activity, activity, this from activity, and this from context team wrap, right? And this one will have, sorry, from context. And this context is an abstract class. It's not an interface, but we have an implementation called context implementation, I think. And we saw that when we did the video on uh, how the activity gets created. I will link that video here in the description or in the top here. Yeah, that's context, right? So if the question goes like following what is context, it is a system handle. It's not an interface, it's an abstract class, 
but we needed to access many things for that system. It's kind of an interface to the system application environment, something like that. This tricky question effect, because we, we happen to use it a lot whenever we want to do something, they teach us like that, but it is important to know at least for what it is used. The third question is, what is the main difference between double equal like that and triple equal? So if you run this, we have a person like this data person, by default, it implements is equal or not. So two equal will be this, will be two equal, would be true if we run this, would be true. So this is will compare the counted or the value. If this value is equal to this value based on the unequal or equals method. If you do triple equal, this will compare the references. So this should produce false and exactly it will produce false. So this is the question, what is the difference between triple equal or two equal in Kotlin? So the third question goes like the following. How do we communicate between two fragments or three fragments? Basically, we have two answers here. One is old and one like relatively new, not that new, but since the coming view models. So basically what you will have to do is that you create a view model here, view model tied to the activity, like you will do it like following, I don't know, private file, some view model and you do it by view model like following. Okay, you'll have just to provide instance and so on. And then you have to create fragment. Okay, fragment here, let's call it fragment S, and it will get this from fragment, sorry, of course. And here, you will get the same view model, but don't get it like following, get it from this one, but use activity view model or something. We do have activity view model like the fog. We do have something similar. So you can get the activity view model, which is the same instance like that. This is done by dependency injection, of course, but you can do it normally with the view model factory thing. And you need to provide just the context or the activity as the parent. So this will ensure you will have the same view model across your activity and your fragment. And that way you can compare send the data from fragment to fragment using that view model in the middle. That's one thing. You can do another one, which is old, like you have to declare an interface here. Like previously you had to declare an interface and let's call it interaction, for example. And basically on click event for, for, from this one, right like, like that. We have this to implement that interaction, interaction like that. And when we receive that on click from here, we will send it to the other fragment. Basically here you'll have to do that on attach tank. And whenever you're on attach, you will have to get a reference to this one. Let's call it private latent bar. Let's call it listener here. It will be this interaction. And we will cast this listener to our context, which will be our activity. So basically we do it as interaction like that. So basically with that, whenever you click here, you can use this to call on click like the following. On click, this will trigger this code here. And basically here you can call the other front. So you should be careful here. Usually we do try catch here to ensure that we are implementing this one. Sometimes we forget that. And yeah, that's it. Either you use it by view models like that, or by implementing this interface thing here and there and do the communication by your hand. So that was for this question, how you should communicate between different fragments. Never communicate between fragments directly always use this kind of pattern. Another question is, what is the difference between lazy and late init? So first of all, you can do private late init. Late init only apply to vars, don't apply to var. So you can do that. And let's call it, let's have string, let's late init. So basically you will assign this var using an assignment. You have to do it using an assignment like that, like explicit assignment. Whereas in lazy, you can't use it with var. You must provide it with a var. Let's call it G, for example, and do it by lazy. The initialization here will go through a lambda. So basically you need a lambda expression to create the value of G. But here with F, you can use the value directly to assign it to this F. So this is the main difference. One is using with var and the other with var. The other we use like a lambda expression to initialize it, the other normal value directly later on. So this is the basic difference between lazy and latent. Another question is, what is the main dissimilarity between blocking function and suspending function? So let's say we have a suspend function here, let's call it A, like following, and we have another function, another normal function, for example, we call B, and the other, this one is suspending, let's call it S, and this one, B, it's not suspending. So here, let's say we call it delay. It will block us for five seconds. And basically here we'll do it the other way with a thread like sleep and five seconds. What is the main difference between this and this? The main difference, not in the function themselves, 
is in the function that's calling them. So if you call as here, well, you can't call as here directly. You have to provide coroutine scope for that. But let's pretend we are calling that. If you call as here, we won't be blocking this function. The parent function won't get blocked. This is the main difference. Like if you have something as here, another function go with here, for example, let's say on create option or something. Let me just do that. This will get executed and this will also get executed. We won't wait five seconds until this will get executed. But if you use B like blocking function here, this would be a blocking call. We can't do other lines until we complete from that. So the execution flow will stop here until five seconds goes like this normal flow block function. Let's pretend this five second is calling to an API or something. We will block here and all, and by that, I mean blocking this main thread, this execution block for creating here, right? So that would be a problem. So that's the main difference between normal blocking function and the suspending function. Suspending function won't block the parent function calling it, but blocking function won't block the parent function execution. That's the main difference. Another question is, what is the difference between parsable and serialization or serializer? You can use both, right? So basically, both are used in order to change the format of an object. It's kind of it's to save the format of an object in order to send it to another location so the other can construct it from that saved format, right? So serialization mainly is slow, parsable is fast. That's the main difference. But why this slow and why this fast? Because serialization, let's say you have a person object like following and you have, for example, private val as the name and you want to serialize this one. What you can do here simply, you can extend it with serializing and you don't have to do anything. How this is possible? This is possible because of reflection and that's why it is slow. It uses reflection and reflection is a little bit slow. So we don't usually use this serializable in Android much because it is slow and because it uses reflection. The other one is called parcelable, parcelable like that. And this one, it's kind of the same, but the serialization must happen explicitly. You have to write some code in order to show how you can do this serialization. So basically you have to do how to write the parcel, how to describe the content, and how to do the creation, right? This is simple, like I usually use code generator or basically we do something like following, partialize, I don't have this integration here. You do partialize and the code will be generated automatically. So usually we do something like following, parcel or something, write, uh, I think string. So as you can see, we are doing this serialization explicitly by our hand. Whereas in normal serializable, it would be happen automatically using reflection. That's why it is slow. So as I said, the serialization would happen explicitly using this code over here, but this will be auto-generated using this annotation because as I said, I don't use that often. We used this previously in Java code, like previously before Kotlin, but we also had a plugin that will write this for us. We didn't implement them ourselves, right? So yeah, that's it for this question. So the final question is, what is the benefits of Kotlin over Java? So here you can describe many things. First of all, you can describe for the null safety, like this is important. Kotlin reinforced this null safety using this parameter, this thing, use this double bang and everything. So you are putting this into your mindset so you can handle the nullability directly. So we don't forget about them. Usually that happen in, in Java. So second, we have extension function, which is very good feature of the language. We have also data classes like this data classes will allow us to write less boilerplate code, right? You don't have to write to string equals hash code and many other things, even also the copy. Kotlin allow us to use coroutines and flows and which is also handy since it allows us to simplify our code to great extent. So Kotlin also is developer friendly, like allow us to write clearer, concise code. It has also interoperability with Java, which also allow us to do many great things. And we do have specific and precise points such as we don't have, for example, semicolons here. We have specific things like val and var. We don't have new keywords here. We have also this amazing when statement, especially when combined with sealed classes for exhaustive Thanks. You can describe many things in this question, but you can provide this kind of bigger points for the Kotlin over job. So that's it for this video. I hope you got some ideas on how to answer some of the common and tricky question. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. If you have another interview question that was tricky for you and you know the answer, please put it in the comment below. We'll be happy to share it also. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Salam alaikum.